that and pray for that man. Hold on, man. Let's see. Let's see what my dog talking about, man. Let's see what my dog talking about. Kenny, what's up, King? Man, you, you are so clutch right now because you, more than anyone, knows how it is with these artists sometimes. So I appreciate you coming on early for your party. You saw me in distress, and you came <laughs> to the rescue. Uh, shit, I ain't doing nothing but sitting around the house. Salute to Ryan Cameron, too. I heard you just shot that Ryan Cameron just now, man. Prayers up for Ryan. Yo, man, it's so crazy. Right now, Charlemagne, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a guy, he's fit. Like, he's everywhere, he moves around, and then all of a sudden, heart failure? Like, like that's, yes, that's yeah. scary. That's why I, um, I, I have come to learn to really appreciate birthdays. You know, I think for a long time, our culture put so much emphasis on youth, but we, yes. all, know, we all know youth is fleeting. So when you start seeing, you know, these brothers and sisters dying so early, or you even hear a story about Ryan, even though Ryan's in his 50s, it's still, it's like, Man, you know, I, I, I really just appreciate being alive. Man, more than ever, man. And this time, I know being with our families, I know you and I, we, we always travel, we always work, and actually be able to sit at home, you know what I'm saying, and have those moments is super special. And I often say this, man. I've said it several times during the tenderona is what I call it. Uh, I think that we needed this. I think we needed this. I think we needed to sit back and process. And that's why, I like, when it came to your portion of the show today, I wanted to, like, talk about protecting our mental health. I think, like, it just gets so hectic, right, in real life. And now we're sitting here and our minds are racing. But it's important to take control of that now before we come out of this. Absolutely. You know, for me, man, it's so interesting because, um, you know, I'm still doing everything that I need to do. You know, I, you know, you do, you know, you can do therapy over FaceTime. You can do therapy over Skype, over the Zoom. I'm still having conversations with my sacred purpose coach. Every Wednesday, I'm I'm still practicing my, my meditation and my breathing exercises, but I have not had any anxiety toward this, this situation. And I think it's because I am leaning into the uncertainty of it all. You know, like I, I read um, Deepak Chopra's Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, and law number six was the law of detachment, and how you just have to lean into the uncertainty of things. And it's so crazy that my therapist has been telling me that for years. Like, yo, you just got to... Like, yo, you just got to lean into the uncertainty of things and you, you, you can't control things. Like, you just, you know, have to let things be what they are. But I, I, I've never grasped that concept until now. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, literally until right now, because I think this is so out of the realm of all of our understandings. It's, it's something that we've never seen before. We don't have anything we can really compare it to. I mean, you got it. You know, in light of history, compared to like the Spanish flu and different pandemics like that, but for the most part, we've never experienced anything like that. So, for for that reason and that reason alone, it's just like, yo, let go and let God. Yeah, I, I haven't had any anxiety towards the situation. As, it, as it's, it's it's ironic you say that. It's ironic you say that because I feel like when I'm supposed to be stressing, like you know, it's like you you have things right, like life comes full at full, full at. And I, and I'm not panicking either. Like, I'm kind of, like, welcoming, welcoming it and kind of digesting all the pieces that are coming, right? Because, you know, God is good. You're still on the radio. You're still able to touch the people, and your check is still flowing. Um, but at the same time, it's a lot of us that checks have stopped, like, literally. Like, you know, it went for me from the McDonald's All-American game to, um, you know, the NCAA tournament with, you know, being here in Atlanta with Coca-Cola, like all these things are happening or supposed to happen, and then all of a sudden, gone, Essence yeah. pushed back. Um, you know, uh, Memorial Day pushed back. Like, everything's pushed back. Yeah, I haven't, um, man, I mean, yeah, I haven't really thought about the money aspect of it uh, only because, like, I'm, 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 a, I'm a homebody anyway, and, you know, uh, a lot of my business doesn't require me to be, be be moving around as much. So I am very thankful for that and very grateful for that. But I've really just been trying to figure out the bigger purpose of what is God trying to tell us in this moment. Like, I, I have not, you know, thought about any money that I've lost. All I've, all I've done is sat around and, 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 and sat in stillness and just listened to what God is trying to tell me right now. I think a lot of times when we pray, we're so busy trying to, trying to tell God what's wrong, but he knows or she knows what, what he, they, they, God knows already 
Right. So it's not about, you know, telling God what your problems are. It's about sitting down and, and trying to see what God is trying to tell us in this moment. And that's what I just, that's what I've been like leaning into. That's what I've been trying to do. Yeah, you, you're not worried about money either because you're rich now. But when you weren't no, rich. That's not true. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> I, but I, I love I love your programming, man, and I want to take it back. And I'm talking about your, the way your mind is working these days. And you know, I rem- I known you for years, um, known you pre the success of the Breakfast Club, and it's just you know it's 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 been an honor to watch your growth, right? Like you know, you might have had these thoughts that weren't so prevalent. Like I don't really remember you on the Wendy Williams show, but I know you come from that shock jock uh, school of Wendy Williams and. You know, seeing you start and having the conversations needed, I would say, right? I think a lot of people could look at it like, he's just trying to be be confrontational. He's trying to be, no, I think people want to know the exact questions you were asking but were scared to ask. But how does it go from being that to a more more thoughtful offering? Because I think a little bit reckless, a little bit early, maybe, I don't know. Now, I think you think more before you offer your, uh, your comeback. I think that just comes with growth. You know, that comes with growth and evolution. Muhammad Ali said the person who, you know, thought at, who, who thinks at 50 the same way he thought at 20 wasted 30 years, you know. Yeah. And, you, know yeah. and, you know, if you if you, if you you are moving a certain way and, you know, uh, you know, certain things, I guess, along the way, just, just paying attention, you know what I mean? Like, I never, I never purposely wanted to make anybody uncomfortable. Like, I always would look at somebody like Angie Martinez and you, you can ask her, I would be like, yo, I want to make people comfortable like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's she, she like makes that. she makes you and big shout big shout to Angie. She makes you feel so a part of the moment. Yeah, and makes it feel about you. And I love that about her. And I remember reading this story a long time ago about the wind and the sun and how the wind and the sun were battling to make this this guy take his his coat off. Like this guy was walking, and like the the, the wind was like, watch this. So the wind just started blowing all crazy, blowing real hard, and trying to blow the guy's coat off. And the dude just held on to his coat tighter and held on to his hat. But then the sun came out, and the sun just shined his rays and made the dude so comfortable and so warm, so he had to take his coat off. And then, you know, he ended up stripping down his boxes and laying under a tree just to cool out. Right. So it was just like, yo, you would rather be the sun, you know what I mean? You want somebody to get comfortable enough to reveal things to you instead of, like, trying to force them to right. reveal, things, reveal things to you. But, I mean, even just on a, on a, on a different aspect, it has nothing to do with you know, how I actually interview people is just simply, like, I, I grew as a person. Yeah, no, but I think, I, I, think, I think you always had a, a journalistic approach because you're a very smart human. Like, it was never like you didn't read books prior to, or mm-hmm. you just didn't share your book list with people. It wasn't like <laughs> you didn't have vulnerable conversations with your people. You just wasn't doing it on air. And I think... I, know, I kind of did, though. I, I think I've always been a perfect balance of ratchetness and righteousness. Like, even... You can go back to the early days of the Breakfast Club. I would still, I would still bring those voices on that needed to be heard. No, no, and I, I'm saying pre, I'm saying pre Breakfast Club, people wouldn't have been able to get those offerings from you in the way that it was received, or as many people as you could connect with on the Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying all that to say, you're absolutely right. I mean, or right, you're absolutely right. You can't be the same, be the same person at the end of the day. Nah. I just love and appreciate how you are able. To I mean, this whole conversation so far, you've been quoting books and quoting people and, you know, putting things in perspective from your learnings, right? And I think often we don't do that. You know, a big problem I'm having right now with our culture is that I don't even give a fuck about um, racism like that anymore. And let me, let me explain what I mean by that, right? Regardless of how much we protest regardless of what legislation has changed and legislation should be changed, you can't stop an old white devil from being racist. You just can't. So the only thing you can, can do is get that money to put yourself in a position of power in order to, to be able to, you know, not only just fund these politicians that are looking out for our best interests, but also just, just to build up our own communities. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just think, I really think financial freedom is our only, only only hope you know that's why when i and, when and that's I, what i and that's, that's what, what I, and that's what i was saying though not to cut you off but that's what i was saying about buying back the block like literally <laughs> like these 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 neighborhoods are so run down and so cheap to buy like if you went into any 
you know, and this is what I'm saying about the billionaires. If they went into any of the world's most impoverished sections of the city, they can literally not even 10% of their wealth change that entire area. Yeah. And, and, and this is what I'm saying. Like, you pay that in taxes. You pay 30, supposedly, you're supposed to pay 34, 40%. What? How can't you do that? Yeah. And there are more billionaires popping up, more black and brown billionaires popping up. It has to be a fucking booklet or a manual that says you have to do this. If, if America was truly using our taxes for what they're supposed to be using our taxes for instead of using the tax money to, you know, continue to build the strongest military on the planet, if they would, like, I think I read something that it said, like, in 2018, uh, Americans paid $1.7 trillion in taxes. Like, if that money was really going where it's supposed to go, our schools would be great. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the, the, the neighborhoods would look better. Uh, people would have more money in their, in, their, in their pocket. Like, they could literally afford to put money in people's pocket, maybe have some type of universal basic income. But they're not doing that shit. At you know all. Yo, like, did you hear about the, I guess, this $1,200 or $2,400 stimulus package, right? Um, you basically got to pay it back or it comes. What, what is it? You, next year, you have to pay it back in taxes. Like, and then you look it's at these other package. countries, they have like 80% of their salary, 70% of their salary being given to them during the times they can't work. Like, and we're paying one point, whatever trillion dollars in taxes. But well, that's that's our tax. But but the, uh, the, the the stimulus package, the stimulus check that just got cut to America, the two whatever trillion dollars it was, that's tax money. So that's what I mean. Like yeah. this is some this is something that could always be happening. Like like that that's our money. Like you all, you ever wonder where your tax money goes? No, seriously, do y'all niggas know where every you, where every your tax year money goes? Who? Every year. <laughs> like every year, I wonder. So especially when you driving, especially you can live in New York and be driving and still potholes. You know what I'm saying? It's trash all over the street. Like it's like, okay, where is this money going? And then you, re- you know, you go to a, a, a more more well off community. You know what I mean? A white community, and you they they got an amazing in the state. You know what I'm saying? They got a they got amazing scenery. The, the, the neighborhood just looks beautiful. You know what I mean? That's where your tax dollars are going. The tax dollars ain't trickling down to the hood. Man, they were saying on Bill Maher the other day that the Chinese built a 53-story skyscraper in 19 days. Like, how can't we get active like that? And we got, and Bill Maher was saying he has potholes on his street for the last 18 years. I think we are active like that, though, Kenny. Man, I think, um, I think we we got to stop looking at everybody else that's running the race, right? Because, like, you know, how, you know, how if you if you was running track you was in your lane, you would have to look just straight ahead and run your race. If you look to the left, you look to the right, you're probably going to trip up, fall, whatever the fuck. Like, black people, this is this is new to a lot of us. I'm just talking about the money aspect of it. The concept isn't new, because it's the same stuff the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was talking about, Marcus Garvey, you know, Martin Luther King Jr., whoever it was, the whole nation of Islam. This, it was, they was always doing for self and talking about building their own communities. But I'm just talking about the generation that's starting to have where we're like, look, we have to build our own, and I just think it's a lot more information available to a lot of a lot of a lot of us now. So I, I just think we can't look at what the white man, the white man's got a four hundred year head start that we helped him build. We can't look at nobody but us. You know what I mean? Like we got to run our own race. And and honestly, man, if we really look at our history from segregation to now, we have come a long motherfucking way. Like the Civil Rights Act just got signed in nineteen sixty four. So I just think we're like, I think if we continue with the pace that we're going, I man, I think we're gonna be all right in the future. That's just that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, no, I have a whole nother appreciation um, for you know the word wealth and what we're leaving our children. Um, but we're gonna have to wrap up in a second. But protect our mental health is is, is your title today, and this will all drive you the fuck crazy if you let it for sure. Um, just give the give the people a few tips, man, on how, you know, to do that daily. I mean, you mentioned a few things that you do weekly um, to help strengthen your mind. So share that with your people. Man, I think that um, I think that we need to
You know, turning on the TV and we're watching the same old things. I think we should really take this time to to, to learn something new, and um, just just try to really lean into the uncertainty of everything. Like I said before, you know, like don't 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 try to. You, you can't control what's coming next. You can't control when America's going to reopen. You know, you can't control what your next situation is going to be as far as employment. You can't control any of that. You know, I know some of us probably had trips planned this summer. You can't control that either. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yo, just lean into the uncertainty of it all and really, really, really sit down and try to figure out what it is God is trying to tell us in this moment right here, right now. Well, God is trying to tell you about this 5G Wi-Fi thing you got going on because everybody is like, what? Why is he breaking well, up? What I'm is gonna, going on? I, I want to tell you something, Kenny. I, I, I got 5G last week and I got 5G and then y'all niggas scared me so bad. You know what I'm saying? That I got rid of the 5G and now I got the regular Wi-Fi again. And I'm going to tell you something. Donald Trump is Wi-Fi towers by all the voting booths in November to scare y'all niggas away. Okay? Because if he builds 5G towers by all the voting booths, y'all niggas is going to be shit uh, death and y'all not going to come out and vote in November. No, we're going to vote. We have to vote. Our lives literally depend on it. Well, I'm proud hey, I of you, bro. I hope, I hope, I hope that we can do Anguilla this year again, man. That's what I hope. I hope things open up enough to where we can be in Anguilla for New Year's Eve again. Because that's a good motherfucking time. Well, I know that's, everybody... That's always a good time, man. Every, everybody on D... Nice now. Peace, bro. Peace, bro. Yo, um, I apologize. I don't know what happened to the Wi-Fi, but I hope you got some of them nuggets because he had a lot to offer. Uh, one time for Charlemagne the guy. I love what he's doing. So listen, I'm going to log off and log back on so Instagram don't cut us off. So uh, Boosie's on the other side. So I'm going to hang Oh, wait, let me see. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, I'm going to log off and I'm going to log back on with Boosie. I'll hit y'all right back.